I'm Tony, and this is my wife, Sophia. And this is our Deep End Couples story. I think there was a lot of, there's a lot of brokenness between both of us. And, and I would say our lives were hectic then. It was nonstop, go, 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 go. And although part of me knew that was not going to lead us anywhere good, I liked it because it protected me from dealing with things at home. Within our marriage, after losing two babies, after kind of the death of a dream or three, uh, we just sort of kept practicing the skill of being numb. Every now and then, I remember feeling this small little desire to actually feel something. Gosh, I want to feel alive, not just dead inside, but looking alive. I really want something. That moment should have been the moment that I turned to my husband. I was truly convinced that there was no hope for our marriage, that there was no promise of a future for us. I took that feeling that I know God gave me, that, come on, feel something, let's do this. And I took it out of God's hands and put it into my own. And that involved going away from my husband and finding somebody else to be romantic with. While this is going on with Sophia, uh, for a while, I know something kind of deep down in my gut tells me something's going on. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't keep that to myself for a few months, uh, because honestly, I thought, well, if she's having an affair, great. There's my out. Um, or two, if she's having an affair, oh, I'm gonna have to deal with this. So I'm just not gonna bring it up. I think at some point I might forget that night, but maybe I'll just never forget it. Uh, and um, it was probably the most intense night of my life. Uh, I, I remember uh, just wanting to take a life. Uh, I remember wanting to take my own life. Uh, I remember just feeling the, the f intense feeling of betrayal. As sad as this is, that is the night that I began to feel again. For, for years, I had only felt frustration and anger. I would say if you're going through that right now, um, I, I understand what that feels like to go, there's no hope. Uh, there's no way this is a salvageable situation, yet my children's future was hanging in that balance, uh, yet our future was hanging in that balance. One of the toughest parts in the process for me was coming to the realization that I had stepped out in the marriage. This was not all Sophia's fault. Um, maybe not physically or emotionally with another person, but I checked out. I checked out months ago, maybe years ago. Uh, I didn't want to actually play an active role in the marriage. I remember feeling like true ultimate disappointment and hopelessness because not only was my marriage over, at least in my mind, I was sure of it, my marriage was officially over and then the life that I had set up as backup was certainly over too because how quickly one comes to their senses and it's as if I could audibly hear the record just cut. And so then in that moment is when I began to feel again because you look at your life as you're convinced that it is literally falling apart before your eyes. And I look at my children and I can suddenly see, oh my goodness, this is what's happening right now. This is the damage. What I thought was just a band-aid solution has actually come to destroy everything. I, I'm not saying this because it's the Christianese thing to say, but I believe 100% that had it not been for this thing called grace, uh, we wouldn't have even had the opportunity to begin to step into it. But the truth is when you tap into it, it's a, it's a pretty miraculous thing uh, because grace not only allows you to to accept forgiveness for yourself, but it allows you to put yourself in the shoes of the person that's hurt you and realize that it's an even playing field. It was the scariest thing I'd ever done. And I remember having to literally talk to myself and convince myself, come on, Sophia, 
you can do this. Shame doesn't get to tell you what to do anymore. And I had to just look shame in the face and no longer give it permission to tell me how to live my life anymore. Getting somebody else around me who was gonna ask me really hard questions. Someone who could spot when my facade was going up again. I know that it is okay with him if I'm not okay. And he, he needs to know that with me, that it, it's okay with me if he's not okay. That we've sort of made that a mantra in our house. Like, it's, it's okay, okay to, to not, not be, be okay. okay. <laughs> if we would have quit, we wouldn't have a marriage. No. Um, we wouldn't have the richness that we have in this marriage that has only been able to come to fruition because we didn't quit. We have a rich, rich marriage. We, would, we wouldn't have the home we have today. We wouldn't have the, the, the family that we have today. And so because we chose to stick with it and persevere and not give up, um, that also taught us uh, just the value of stamina. Anyone can experience novelty uh, because it's everywhere, right? You can meet someone new and get that spark, but intimacy is a fruit of the good, the bad, the ugly, and that's true intimacy. Uh, so I think had we given up, we maybe could have experienced novelty with other folks and other people and maybe other partners, but um, we've experienced true intimacy. We have five children and I know that we are going to be able to say that we are sending five awesome citizens into this world who know the value of hard work and of perseverance and they're going to be able to say that if there's something that they could rely on it's the love of God and the steadfastness of their parents love. We, we didn't think we could be this happy before our crises and we didn't think we could be this happy during. It took until after the crisis hit and after we learned the value of facing trouble and facing struggle, finally we saw the richness that comes through sticking together and working as a team and really being one. When you go home and you realize that after the most terrible day of your life you can still have somebody that will extend you grace and a smile and be kind to you, there's just kind of no greater thing than that.